This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 106. In this episode, I will show you 32 new features in 10 different Google Apps. So make sure all your Google Apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Before starting, let me remind you about the Wallpapers by In-Depth Tech Reviews app. If you like any of the wallpapers you see in this video or any of my other videos, they are now part of the collection and you can find the Google Play Store download link in the description below. And if you're facing any problem in loading the wallpapers, I recommend using any free VPN to make it work. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Now let's talk about the YouTube app and here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first change is the redesigned channel page. So for example, when I search for my channel like this, you will see here that I have a banner at the top with the channel name, the subscribers, and here I have a quick button to subscribe or view the channel with the latest videos showing in a carousel. And as you see, the banner has an accent color that matches the colors of the channel logo. The second change is on Google TV. Now you have a dedicated tab for the podcasts that you can access from the side menu. The next app we have is YouTube Music. And here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first one is related to the AI radio. Now in the home feed, you will see a new carousel called Ask for Music. It will give you some suggestions based on your history that you can tap on any of them immediately. You can use the text box to describe exactly what you want, or you can use the microphone. So let's tap on one of the suggestions to see how it works. So for example, I'm gonna pick this one. Tapping on it will start loading, and then it will show you the created playlist and start playing the music immediately. You can see it over here, and you also get even more suggestions that will narrow down your query as shown here. You can add your own text as well, in addition to the microphone. And by tapping on the ellipses, you can do these things like save to playlist, delete radio or pin to speed dial and so on and so forth. The second change is related to playlists. Let's say you want to change the thumbnail by tapping on the edit button. Now you have the ability to choose a custom photo from your gallery, which is a nice touch. Plus the create with AI option got two new categories instruments and workout. And here's a quick example for the instruments category. As you see here, it generated some photos based on the type of music in my playlist that I still can modify by tapping on the highlighted text and it will give me even more options. Now let's talk about Google Photos and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. I will start with the magic editor that got two new enhancements. The first one is related to the reimagine background feature. Previously, to reimagine the background, you need to tap anywhere like this and then tap on reimagine. But sometimes it doesn't select everything in the background and you have to add things manually. And that's why Google added a new option over here under the magic wand called reimagine background that will do the automatic selection for you. The second improvement is the more accurate and faster subject selection. I'm not able to show you this on camera, but based on my experience, it works much better than before. The third change is the updated system wide photo picker. And here you will notice three new changes. The first one is when you start multi-selecting photos, you will see here a bubble at the bottom with the count, the ability to cancel, and when you tap on preview, it will show you the photos in full screen with the ability to select or deselect from here and then tap on done. And once you tap on done, it will attach the photos to the application. Also the albums tab is now called collections. And when you go here, you will see all your albums from the device or the cloud available to select the photos you want. Not only this, but when you go inside, you can continue multi-selecting even more photos that will be added to the counter. And when it comes to search, I started to see some banners at the top every time I tap on the search bar. One of these banners says, find text matches in captions, images, or metadata by using quotations like invoice or New Orleans. Here's another one saying, say things like colorful sunsets or Alice and me laughing. And it seems like the search is now more complex. And lastly, I got this brand new memory design automatically created for me called Popout, which is the first time to see. Now let's talk about Google Messages and here I'm gonna show you five new changes. The first change is under the Your Profile page that you can find in the Profile menu. And here I started to see 
some differences first the profile picture is now in a rounded container and when you tap on any of the menus you get this new bouncy animation as you see here and also this card is new when you try to change your profile picture you will get the options presented in a much better way you have the camera the gallery illustrations and the ability to remove the profile picture and the tapping on the ellipses will give you access to google photos past profile pictures help and send feedback when you tap on google photos it will show you all the photos in your gallery in this grid view but when you tap in on the gallery option in the card it will show you the photo picker of android the second change is under the app settings page when you go to suggestions you will see this brand new design and for reference here is the old design on my pixel 5 you will notice here that each and every item has its own icon now unlike before google also removed these examples from the list to make things cleaner you will also see here that the options are pretty much the same but they are organized differently for example smart re smart reply is here magic compose is here suggested stickers and the suggested actions is now called actions and when you go inside it will give you an animated tutorial on how the feature works it will show an icon next to certain messages and when you tap on it it will give you some quick shortcuts to calendar jeff search share location and more and then we have the nudges which is a separate menu now and here you can toggle each item separately like suggest message reminders and birthday reminders now let's talk about the new changes under the conversation page and let me use my pixel 5 once more to show you the differences you'll notice here that some buttons got relocated like the plus and emoji they swapped places and also when you start typing as you see here the magic compose button starts to appear while here i don't have it and if i want to access to access the magic compose i need to tap on the plus button and i can find it over here which wasn't the case before the fourth change is related to the expressive animations we all know that when you send certain phrases like happy birthday for example you get these full screen animations on the screen but now this feature is expanded to the emojis but you have to use at least two emojis to see the expressive animations so when i send those two hearts as you see it's giving me an expressive animation and let's try to mix between two different emojis and see what's going to happen this one doesn't work but when you use the same emoji twice that's the only case where you will see the expressive animations last but not least i started to see this new suggestion when i receive voice messages it says reply with a voice note so when you tap on it it will do exactly the same thing as tapping this button the next app we have is gemini which got a lot of new changes the most exciting change is the new live camera stream and screen sharing capabilities added to gemini live that you can see over here we have two buttons one for the camera and one for the screen sharing i created a separate video talking about those two features in real life that you can watch by clicking the card showing now on the screen or by using the link in the description below but let me also give you a quick live demo gemini what's the name of this product that's a nest thermostat e did you have any questions about it no this is wrong this is not a nest thermostat can you try again my bad that's definitely a microsoft surface arc mouse what can i help you with regarding it as you heard it makes a lot of mistakes but sometimes it becomes really useful and that's exactly what i experienced in my dedicated video about those two features that you can watch if you want to know more when it comes to the screen sharing you can tap on this button and you can only share the entire screen because the share one app option is disabled and when you tap on share screen it will quit the app and take you to your home screen so you can open whatever you want so for example if you want to inquire about anything in any app you can simply open it and start talking about what you see gemini can summarize can you summarize the notifications you see on the screen right now okay i see a few notifications here there's one about a new foldable phone from galaxy another about image generation coming to chat gpt and one about a price drop on a poco phone Anything else you'd like me to summarize? No, thank you.
There is another quick way to use the screen sharing is by simply opening the page you want to talk about and then trigger Gemini and you will see the share screen with live option. Tapping on it will do exactly the same thing. Those two features are only available for Gemini advanced subscribers, at least for now. The second change is the redesigned more menu. As you see, now it looks much better and everything is more reachable. Here you have the camera, gallery, files, and Google Drive, in addition to two toggles, one for the pre-search and the other one for a brand new feature called Canvas which is used for writing documents and code. And this new Canvas feature is also available for the free users. So when I switch to a free account, I still have Canvas. And this is a really cool feature that you can use now on Android and iOS. Talking about free users, they also got access to the Gems feature, which was previously available only to advanced users. It will give you some presets to choose from over here, or you can create your own by going to your Gems, and you can do this on the web. Back to the advanced users, now you have access to the latest Gemini 2.5 Pro Experimental, which is currently in beta, and you can switch to it from here. Google also added a brand new feature called Generate Audio Overview. Once you attach a document to the text box, and by the way, this feature is available for free and advanced users. When you tap on Generate Audio Overview, it will go through the document and generate an audio file that you can play like a podcast or a music file on your phone. If you don't want to wait for it until it finishes, you can simply lock your phone and you will get a notification once done to start listening to the audio overview. So let's give it its time to show you how it works. Now it's done and it finished creating the overview after three minutes and the file is about six pages. So let's tap on it. It will take you to a web-based interface that you can play the audio file. Here it's 9 minutes and 54 seconds. All right, so today we're going to take a deep dive into something. Um, one of our listeners actually sent this over. It's a service agreement from a company called AR Western Migration. Yep. And they are all about helping folks navigate the process of applying for the Portugal D7 residency visa. Yeah, that's a popular one. It is. And so this agreement... It and that's a really cool feature because it creates the audio overview in an interview format as if it's a podcast or something. So you can listen to it. And that's really, really cool in my opinion. Last but not least, you can access Gemini on the web without the need to sign into your Google account, same as ChatGPT, unless you try to attach a file, that's when you have to sign in to be able to proceed. Now let's talk about the Pixel Weather app that got some useful new features. The first change is under the Locations page. When you try to check the weather of a specific area, you no longer need to add it to your permanent list to be able to check it, and you'll notice here that the plus button has been replaced with a magnifying glass, and when you start searching for a place, you will notice here that you have a plus button next to each one if you want to add it to your permanent list, or you can simply tap on the name to check the weather conditions. But later, if you want to save it as well, you have another shortcut over here at the top right corner, tapping on save will add it to your list that you can delete later by swiping. The third change is related to the animations you get in the background based on the weather conditions. Now you have the ability to pause the animations by simply tapping on any empty spot and you will see here they are now paused and you can resume back again by tapping on this play button. Last but not least, in the 10-day forecast card, Google added the date under the day of the week to be able to identify which day exactly is it. Now let's talk about the Pixel Studio app, which got four new changes. The first change is the light theme. As you see here, this is the first time to see the app in light theme, and you can adjust this by going to the profile menu and then tap on theme. And here you can choose between light, dark, or system default. The second change is the new overlay button next to the create button. Tapping on it will give you quick access to creating stickers. Here you can describe the sticker using your own words, or you can choose a photo from your gallery. So let's pick this one as an example. And then I'm gonna select the shoes and then tap on review sticker and this is how it looks. The third one is related to Marsha update. I finally got the ability to create photos of people. So let's try this query and see what's gonna happen. So I didn't get any error message and here's the final outcome. Last but not least, when you go to the projects page, now we have a dedicated tab for the previously created stickers. 
Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change and I will start with the Google app. You will notice here that the save tab is now called activity. When you go inside, you will see a brand new design. First, you have a new section for history that will show the most recent four items with the count of total items over here. Tapping on it will show you the full list. And when you scroll all the way down, you will see this blue button says see full history, which will take you to your Google account activity page. And then when you scroll down, you'll see the saved items and collections are now two separate carousels that you can scroll through horizontally to save space. But if you want to check the full list, you can tap on the arrow next to each one. And this is how it looks. Next, we have Google search and I got the brand new AI mode. But keep in mind, it's an experimental feature that requires registration through the Google Labs website by going to the side menu and then tap on experiments. Uh, you will see here the AI mode is one of them and you can test whatever you want from the list. I already opted for the daily lesson one in Google app, but I'm still on the wait list. Let's get back to the AI mode to show you how it works. Here you will get the search results, a text box with a microphone for voice input. But let's say I want search for something like Android 16 features and let's see what's going to happen. It will give you this glowing animation and then it will come up with the results. It will first show you some websites and then it will give you a summary as if you are talking to Gemini. This is just a smaller version of Gemini, but instead of opening the app, you can use it specifically for search. And lastly, we have the Gmail app. When you search for something, now you will see this new filter at the top that will allow you to choose between most relevant and most recent. Most relevant is using AI to show you the most relevant and recent message related to your search query. But if you still want to sort them by the most recent, you can do this. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please reach me out on social media or in the comments below if you spotted any new feature so I can include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.